quickly in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm not going to be long um, at all. I've been coming here from California and I've got to go leave out tonight and uh, leave out the country Monday. So I promise you that the Lord is going to do a quick work. Amen. I've, as a matter of fact, I feel, I feel a quickening spirit. Amen. Quickening spirit is shaking me right now. <laughs> but I need you to pray for me these few moments. I want 1 Samuel 17 and verse 3. Appreciate Dr. Webb. I just have to call her name. Amen. You know, ain't many people to get a doctor to give them a cup of tea. Amen. But, um, Verse 3, and the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. For we are the hearers, and by faith, the doers on tonight. I could have saved you that trouble of getting up. I don't read long. I want you to read that verse, though, with me again. But this time aloud in unison. And uh, what does it say? The Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And since there's nobody here but us, I found out we can read it as many times as we want to read it. And I'd like to read it just one more time. And uh, if you'll turn the decibels up in your voice box just a bit so your neighbor can hear these words. Let's read them one more time. What did they say, dear saints? <laughs> the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. I want to just talk about for a little while uh, being in position for victory, being in position for victory. I said I won't be long and I won't be long and one reason I won't be long tonight is because this passage is, is one with which most of us have great familiarity. Look around this room, I can see it's a well church room and it's a church gathering, it's a religious apostolic conference and that gives me reason to believe that all of us already have some familiarity with God's word and certainly have familiarity with the writings that are here in this 17th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. I think we understand also the dynamics of this text. And of course, there are people who are principal players and they their names arise as you pilfer down further in this text. And of course, not only are we familiar with the primary personages, but we're also familiar with the context and context of this circumstance as is presented to us. As it is all over the Old Testament, Israel is center and Israel is at the core the goings of Israel, the comings of Israel. And, and they stand out again to us even here as a lesson. And truth is, uh, we really ought to thank God for Israel. I'm not sure that we appreciate them in, in every way. Yes, they're God's chosen people and we appreciate them for that. We know they serve a central place in the purpose and plan of God and the Lord instructed us to pray for them, pray for the safety and pray for the peace of Israel. And then he even guaranteed us a blessing and having done so, one of my prayers is that America will always stay on the right side of Israel. Doesn't mean that uh, they're right in everything they do, every decision they make, but uh, Yet they're God's chosen people. And that shouldn't be hard for, for us to relate to because we're not right all the time in everything we do. 
but yet we somehow remain God's elect and remain God's favorite. And so I appreciate them because God has designated them and deigned them to a place of prominence in the tapestry of the history of our world. But not only do I deem them or esteem them highly for that, I, I, uh, I'm grateful for them because uh, they did something for me. They're a role model for us. And I want to say, when I say they're a role model for us, that, that role model is like a pendulum. It swings in both directions. They're a positive one and a negative one. And I'm grateful to them because uh, they afford us the privilege of, of not having to experience some things. Paul looked back on Israel and wrote about them to the church at Corinth, talked about their, their successes and their failures, and he summed it all up and, as he referenced the Old Testament text of their history. And he said these things were written for our admonition and learning. I've always been a believer that it's better to learn from somebody else's mistake than yours. I know a lot of times people often say that experience is the best teacher. I, I think that's a relative statement. It's true sometimes, but sometimes it's better to learn from somebody else because some, some experiences can be catastrophic. I mean, other experiences can be irreversible. And if the truth be told, some experiences can be your final experience. And so it's good sometime when you can sit and learn. I don't think every generation ought to do uh, what the previous generation did. One generation. How many agree with that? One generation ought to learn from the other generation. And I tell my children sometime, and they, I often say it at my church, if you're going to make a mistake, make a new mistake. No need in doing the same old dumb stuff. Because if you do the same old dumb stuff, then that means you're stuck on stupid. Can I get a witness in here? And so we got to be careful as we walk with God. And if we're readers of the Bible, we don't want to just be historians and experts on Israel. Amen. But we ought to learn from Israel. So that we don't fall into that category that James talked about, where we're just readers of the word, but not doers of the word. And so Israel here is teaching us another lesson. Israel here, if I can have about 15 minutes, is helping us again to understand, to come to terms with some things. And, and of course, as I said before, I know you know where they are. You can have a sense of their bearing here in the scripture, uh, Israel, uh, right now, they're uh, what we might call an emerging nation, and, uh, but, but they're struggling emerging nation. And when I look at Israel, it, 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 they're sort of like the church is uh, at times. And I hope you won't feel insulted if I say sometime, because I'm in the same pool, we can be sort of schizoid in how we operate. Amen. Sometimes folk in the church have uh, multiple personalities. Some of y'all, some of y'all know that, don't you? You got some people, you don't know how to deal with them. You don't know wh whatever day it is. Can I get a witness? And some people, some people have seven personalities a week. One way Monday, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Another way Tuesday, can I get a witness? just don't know. you got to be careful with them. And, but that's true. That was true of Israel. That's true of the church. Sometimes our relationship with God is spasmodic and, and it has schizoid tendencies. And, and sometimes we don't all together know, amen, what to do with our relationship. And when I look at Israel, part of their problem was they, they didn't know how to handle their relationship. They, they were God's elect. They were God's chosen. We know all of those things. They, they were put in a special place by God. And, and it was special indeed because their, speci their, their speciality had nothing to do with them. And that was a hard part for them to deal with. And if I can relate it right to us, 
That's a hard part that we struggle with every day in the church. That's why we have added so many things. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing in back years. Uh, and we, we raise the bar because, because we can't accept, amen, what God has already done. And we feel like we have to have a part in it. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. That was the Pharisees' dilemma. And that's why, you know, that's why ancient Jewry came up with all of those additions that Jesus had to decry because they could never come to terms with what God did for Abraham. You know, it's strange that, that we can't be blessed with the simple things. We always seem to struggle. Can I get a witness? Israel was God's elect. And that means that they didn't elect themselves. God elected them. Matter of fact, he told them, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Sometimes, even in our theology, we get twisted up. I wish I could talk tonight. Sometimes in our hymnology, and the Lord, I believe, winks at it because he knows what we mean when we say it. We, we sang the song, I found him, and I'm glad. But I, I always uh, suggest uh, anything that is found had to be lost. God ain't never been lost. He said, forever I'm God. Can I get a witness in here? But truth of the matter is, uh, we didn't find God. He found us. He was there. How many know he was there all the time? He was waiting for the blinders to come off our eyes. Waiting for our spirit to be quickened. But, but, but Israel was chosen by God. God just, just chose them one day. We're not, I'm not going to get lost in that. He just, just chose them. Abraham and Terah, y'all remember that? In the household of Terah, in the down, thank God, uh, where he was among the Gentiles and among the heathens. The Bible lets us know that God went out there and just called him out. Nothing he did, nothing he deserved, nothing he merited, just called him out. And when he called him out, amen, he called everybody else out called the seed within him out, called the nation, told him what he was going to do. Take your seed and I'm going to make it uh, out of it a great nation. And not only is the nation going to be great, but I'm going to bless the whole world. Everybody is going to be blessed. You know, that's why we ought to be glad for every person that's blessed. Sometimes we struggle when God blesses somebody other than us. And the person we fight, sometimes we don't know our destiny is intertwined with their destiny. Can I get a witness in here? Every, you haven't bothered your neighbor tonight. Everybody tell somebody, you better be glad when God's blessing me. Yeah, you, you didn't say that demanding enough. Say it, say it with some demand. Say, you better be happy when the Lord, Lord, because when he blesses me, he just might be blessing you. He brings me out. He might be bringing me out so I can pull you out. Something about it. The intertwining, the workings of God. And so uh, he told him, I'm going to bless you. And, and, but the mystery of it was that Abraham didn't do anything to be blessed. He, he was just uh, in the land of earth. He was a sinner, didn't merit it, didn't deserve it. I hope nobody here tonight thinks you deserve it. I hope nobody here saved tonight think you deserve being saved. Can I get a witness in here? You didn't pay to get saved. Hear me. And you're not paying to stay saved. You're not keeping yourself saved. God is keeping you saved. Can I get a witness in here? How many know you, you're preserved by his mercy? If you didn't have God, the devil would take you out right now. Pull you out there. I'd, I'd like us to be careful in our testimony. Careful. I'm not going to be long in our terminology. Careful in our bragamony. Hello, somebody. Don't talk about what you wouldn't do. I know I went when you brag sometime. I, when I honey, when I wasn't saved, I wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. You didn't do it because God didn't let you do it. God set the boundary. Lord, I thank you for the boundary you set. I thank you for the fences you built around. I thank you because you didn't let me go too far. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody praise God for his protection. His covering. Come on. Amen. You don't have to just praise him right from your seat. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. But he didn't just keep you when you got saved. He kept you before you got saved. 
He kept me so he could keep me again. And so I praise him tonight. I don't want my mind to run too far because my mind gets to running too far. I get excited. Amen. When I think about what he kept me from, think about the crowd I used to run in. And they went over the cliff, but God kept me back from the cliff. Think about folk out there. Y'all know some folk you used to be with? They're dead tonight, but you're still alive. They're strung out on drugs, but God kept you in your right mind. We all ought to praise him. Thank God for being our keeper, being our preserver. Now unto him, able to keep me from falling. Everybody tell somebody, God kept me from falling. Matter of fact, help them real quick. I got to run on. They don't believe you. Help them real quick. Tell them he's keeping me from falling right now. He didn't keep me. I'd, I'd, I'd fall over. Not just in the spirit. God is keeping your body together. God didn't keep you. If he withdrew himself, your breath would fall from your lungs. If God didn't keep you, you'd get limp on the pew. Slide off on the floor. That's why nobody ought to have to beg you to praise God. You ought to praise him just for being alive. Praise him because I'm sitting up, clothes on and in my right mind. What am I to do? Ikab Asaya. What am I? Ah, glory. What a mighty God we serve. You may be seated. I, the Israel, let me just move real quick. They, uh, Israel was here and and we got it uh, understood they were chosen and selected and they didn't have nothing to do with it and the saints of God the church were chosen and selected and we don't have nothing to do with it the position we in we ain't got nothing to do with the position amen God put you in that position you didn't do it God anointed you for it amen I'm not a preacher because I made myself a preacher God made me a preacher God made you a pastor God may, can I get a witness in here? Sometimes we got, we got, our chest is too big and our, our head is too swollen, but, but God gets all of the glory. He chose Israel and put them, thank God, in that place. And, and so here they were. And, and as I said before, can I have about 10 minutes? They, they struggled, they struggled, they struggled, they struggled. They was, they were struggling with, with this selection. I've always, I've tried to figure it out. They wrestled with their being chosen. And so uh, they, I believe sometimes they were like many of us. They were running from their destiny. And you, you read their, their history real close. They, they looked like they had problems all along the way. And I can't tell you all their problems. Problems, the rest of Genesis, trying to come to terms with being chosen by God, with being God's elect, with being that speckled hen in the chicken coop. Then, and, and that's what they, they did, thank God, even down in Egypt and coming out of Egypt and through Exodus. Amen. We see them struggling, thank God, with their destiny and with their selection. We see them, thank God, uh, in the wilderness. They got stuck there because they couldn't accept the simplicity of being delivered by God. They, and they, they, made, they made something simple complicated. Isn't, isn't that what we do? We, it's so simple to be blessed, but, but we always insert our mind in it. And, 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 and when God already said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and, and my ways, amen, are not your ways. I, I, how many, tell your neighbor, they won't get it, but tell your neighbor, it's just as simple as believing God. It's, just as simple. Then I know somebody, somebody will catch that on the way home because because somebody came to the conference and and you came looking for a mystery, but I didn't come with a mystery. I came to tell you it's just as simple as saying, Lord, I believe it. I, as a matter of fact, the Lord just told me to tell you if if you would confess, I believe you right now. He told me I'll fix it before you get home. If you would, if you would open your mouth, I I, I need some bold folk. To open your open your mouth and and speak over something crazy and say, Lord, I believe you right now. I believe you. I'm, I can't even fix it. I'm not even close to it. I can't manipulate it. But but I be, I'm fool enough to believe that you can work a miracle while I was at the service. You can work it out. 
while I was in the house of God blessing your name I'm crazy enough to believe that when I get home tonight that everything is gonna be all right somebody clap your hand for an unexpected miracle that's how that's how that's how that's how the simple things and and so Israel struggled Israel wrestled Israel had their issues I'm almost now to where we need to be that's that's what's happening and they got stuck in the wilderness how long 40 years stuck in the wilderness wandering around they should have trusted God I wish I had time they should have embraced what God said but they kept on getting stuck stuck amen when they had already been delivered stuck when they had already been brought out bound when God had already delivered them under under bondage when God had already told Pharaoh let my people go one day the church is going to realize that God has already told the devil that you belong to me one day one day one day we're going to understand amen that God has already set me free and then and he who the son have made free is free indeed one day we're going to wake up to the fact that that I didn't have to deal with everything I dealt with that that I don't have to I didn't have to go through everything I went through but but they elongated the journey because they couldn't believe God and so they drifted 40 years and now now we're almost we're almost to first Samuel we're through the Pentateuch and now we've gone through Joshua when they finally get over uh, uh, into the promised land and and that's where they are they in the promised land and they're they're struggling in the place of promise but but they didn't understand uh, even in the place of promise God wants to challenge my faith and, and they, they wanted to go over and not have any enemies uh, amen but there were enemies in the promised land can I get a witness in here uh, but they didn't they, they, they wanted they wanted the promise of faith that's how the Lord gave it to me they wanted the promise of faith but they didn't want the struggle of faith and, and faith is not mature until faith has struggled faith faith it, it can't grow can I get a witness in here if, if you have never wrestled with your faith you don't have mature faith you 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 sometimes got to struggle I wish am I by myself anybody in here ever struggled to believe God uh, I deliver me from robo saint deliver me from line saint deliver me from hyper faith saint that that want to pretend that I've never had any doubts the, honey faith is not about having any doubts faith means that I believe God over my doubt Lord I believe but help thou my unbelief uh, I wish I had me a praying church look at your neighbor and tell him I need God to help me right now need God to help me now your neighbor ain't gonna like it but tell your neighbor I'm praying for your unbelief I'm praying that God give you so much faith that it overrides your unbelief so that you can look the devil in the eye and say even though it don't look like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen anyhow it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I gotta move on it's gonna everybody Everybody tell somebody it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You, you got the hip tired preacher preach. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Say, look at me, look at me. It's God said it's gonna happen. You don't care how bad it is, it's gonna happen. You don't care how dark it is, it's gonna happen. I don't care how dark thing it is, it's gonna happen. I don't care how many enemies you have. No weapon formed against you. It's gonna happen. It's gonna and I'm working ah, glory I'm working 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 it out but but you got to deal with the struggle and you got to go over and so here they are I'm almost through here they are here they are now they're in the place of promise they in now the land of Egypt and and there's still some things happening there you see what's going on amen God says now you're unique and so I want you to be unique and I'm gonna set you up in a way that that's gonna be unlike other nations other people you're not gonna be like other folk he said uh, there's gonna be a direct link between you and me I don't want you to, to be like each of these other nations these Gentiles that I told you to drive out amen I, I, I he said matter of fact I'm gonna be your king you 
You don't need nobody to sit on the throne. Amen. I sit on high. I'm, I'm your king and, and I'm in charge and I'm control and and that's where you get into uh, the dispensation of the judges and and y'all know what happened uh, uh, when they got in crisis there would be a little leader that would rally them but but God was their direct king and that was the pattern throughout the book of judges and and then you get thank God through through judges and and and, and, and then Israel are always running from their destiny always running from who they are and and they're trying to fit in sometimes y'all ain't gonna like me like the church tries to fit in want to mix in I, but one day we're going to accept the fact that that we've been called to be different that our lifestyle our lifestyle is a different lifestyle i'm not talking about dots and dashes and and hats and dresses and earrings no 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 i'm talking about values and and morality can i get a witness we've been called out come out from come out come out from among them and and be ye separate saith the lord we 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 are we are in them but not of them it, it don't mean that we got to leave the world but but we got to be the salt within the world ye are the salt of the earth and if the salt have lost its savor it's good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden on the foot of men somehow saints of God we got to pray for one another that God helps us to keep our integrity somehow can I get a witness somehow somehow we got to keep our values and keep our posture and keep our holiness can I get a witness in here the devil wants to rob us and he robbed us sometime because he wants us to to co-mingle and co co-opt and he doesn't want us to stand out he wants us to blend in and he wants us to be like that lizard that they call the chameleon that 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 blends in and in, in every every geographical setting but but there's some places that saints don't belong and then how many know saints ought to always stand out ought to always be a glow about a child of God look at your neighbor see if you see a glow look at him look at him you ain't you ain't got to say nothing this time you ought to be able to look at him can I get a witness <clears throat> look at him look at him look at him it ain't, it ain't about your dress it ain't about your dress amen they, 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 when you got the Holy Ghost it'll shine out of you when you got the Holy Ghost amen something burst and something flows from you something bubbles over when you got the holy ghost there ought to be some signs hello somebody when you got god oh i got to go there i got to go there you can tell who's saved just by sitting up in church for a while you can tell who got the holy ghost no everybody's not a jumper everybody's not a runner everybody's not a shouter everybody's not a dancer but everybody ought to do something there there ought to be some signs of life. Can I get a witness? Everybody, everybody, clap your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him everything, everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. You praise him your way, I praise him my way. But there ought to be some signs that you're not emotional. Your eyes ought to blink. If you're not emotional, every now and then your head ought to rock from side. Yo, you know, there ought to be some sign. Can I get a witness? When you got the Holy Ghost, you have an appreciation of what God has done for you. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I something, something, some I glory, something ought to be bumping, something ought to be churning, and so so I'm almost through. They, they, they struggled, they struggled, they struggled with destiny, they struggled with selection, they struggle with God choosing them. And, and now, now during even this time of the judges, they struggled. Uh, God was doing supernatural stuff, but they're still looking over the fence. I wanna be like them. I wanna be like this one and that one. And, and after a while, they came up in their mind. They said, they said, you know what? We, we want a king like those other folk. We want they didn't even understand their own exclusivity. And, and I, 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 just, I just, I don't want to go too far with this, but, but I hope that, that God one day will help the apostolic church, uh, amen, appreciate its own uniqueness. And, and there's a beauty, there's a beauty about us. Can I get a witness? 
Oh, we got to associate. I'm not saying live in a bubble, but, but, but we, we can't live in a bubble and salt the world. We got to be applied to the world. But, but while we're being applied, we cannot lose our savor. Wow, wow. Can I get a witness in here? Can somebody help me preach tonight? We, we gotta, we've got to remain and keep our integrity. And, and let me just say this. We've got to appreciate the fact that we are people of the name. Oh, I wish I was in the right church. Amen. Everybody want to look down on us, but, but I dare you to tell a neighbor, if we ain't got nothing else, we got the name. If we, oh, oh I wish I could preach up in here. If we don't have anything else, we got the name. We, we may not have the numbers, but we got the name. We may not have the money, but we got the name. We may not have the platform, but we got the name. And, and how many know if you got the name, you got what you need? Because there's power in the name. In the name of Jesus. Uh, everybody tell three people in a hurry, we got the name, we got the name. We got the name. I, I, I wish y'all would be more excited. I got to run on. Okay, open your mouth. Tell somebody behind. We got the name. And, and tell them in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. How many know? How many know? There's something about that name. When you use that name, the sick get healed. When you use that name, demons and devils run and scout. When you use that name, something about that name and, and so so they didn't appreciate you may be seated i'm almost through i need about six minutes amen they, they didn't appreciate it and and they were trying to mingle and get amid everything and get out there and they wanted a king we oh we see the other folk got a king and so we want a king like the other folk have and and they went to samuel the the last judge of israel samuel the prophet the last judge of israel and said samuel we want a king like everybody else and samuel you remember he had a crisis amen he got all broken down went and cried i believe he was crying went and mumbled to god and and told god about those folk those, god you see those i mean those folk over there amen you see you see see how they treat me amen no they don't appreciate me and and they said they don't, they don't like my judgeship and 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 god had to wake them up you know i read that scripture right one time and and i found out uh, 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 dr bender that that god was talking to us pastors because because sometimes we get in a pastoral funk and because we're working with the church and, and sometimes the church ain't rolling like we want it to roll. And, and sometimes the people ain't cooperating like we want them to cooperate. And, and we'll get a little private attitude while we're smiling at y'all. We go in a little funk and, and go into our prayer circle and, and tell God, Lord, they, they don't like me and they rejected me. But, but God had to help Samuel. And in helping Samuel, he helped us. He said, Samuel, this ain't got nothing to do with you. Sometime, sometime. We think too much of ourselves. God said, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. And, you, and, 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 and so he said, they want a king. I'm going to give them a king. If I, if I had time to go down another path, I'd tell you to watch what you pray for if I had time. Amen. Every prayer is not an anointed prayer. Every, every request is not a godly request. Uh, I hear the psalmist say he gave them their request, but, but he sent leanness to their soul. He, oh, he gave it to them, but, but they didn't know what to ask for. He said, I'm going to give you this king, but, but he's going to be a whammy on you, and he's going to do a job on you. And I can't go into the depths of that tonight, but you know what happened. They ended up with Saul. Saul was the first king that, that God gave them Saul a Benjamite. Can I get a witness? Saul uh, that had the lookings of a king. Saul that had the trappings of a king. Saul that had the aura of a king. Saul, he walked like a king, talked like a king, fought like a king. Uh, oh, they got caught up. There. Saul, Saul is the man. Saul, thank God, the son of Tish, strong and robust, muscular. Can I get a witness? Masculine. That, that's the king, uh, amen, that we want and God gave them the king that they wanted and, and the rest is history because that's what puts us in the dilemma. And it, it don't take long to realize that, that Saul wasn't who he was supposed to be. Amen. See, but just because you get in position, it don't mean you should be in that position. Just, just because, thank God, 
you're in a place can I get a witness it don't mean that you ought to be in that place and and Saul got in that place and and then he was over it God said I'll work with you but if you if you cling to me but it didn't take him long because he didn't have the right stuff he got caught up in himself did his own thing we you know his history you know his pattern amen but his sacrifice intruded on the priesthood can I get a witness went down went down because he didn't have a relationship with God amen man he picked up the newspaper and read the horoscope because he didn't have a relationship I'm talking but y'all ain't gonna say nothing didn't have a relationship can I get a witness you better watch what you read you better watch amen you got stargazers in the church you got oh I wish I wish I wish uh, some of y'all not y'all but some of y'all is amen is calling in <laughs> thank God to the prophet that's selling blessing plans some of y'all some of y'all can I get a witness you better watch Watch yourself for the spirit of witchcraft get on you. You better watch. Y'all ain't liking me tonight. You better watch. Or your neighbor didn't want that. Tell him you better watch yourself. You better, better watch yourself. I'm going to go further. You better watch every prayer line you get in. You better watch. It's a spirit of witchcraft. And sometimes, sometimes the witch come to church. Sometimes the witch is in the pulpit. Sometimes... Oh, I got to talk anyhow. Sometimes, sometimes, you better watch that spirit. Y'all ain't liking me. I'm, I'm going to get run out of town, but can I finish what I got to say? Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, they ain't going to like you. Tell your neighbor, quit running up in every prayer line. Run across town, leaving your church, running to another church, trying to get a word. You already got the word. We got 66 books of the word oh y'all ain't gonna like me can can i get a witness in here always need a word always want somebody to speak over your life and and tell you what's gonna happen tomorrow you need to hear what's gonna happen today you, oh, i wish i had me ah oh, can somebody clap your hand and shout glory shout glory and hallelujah watch it watch it watch it watch it watch out for the spirit i feel like staying here another moment watch out for the spirit of witchcraft watch out for the witches and warlocks of indoor that are sitting up in the church right now watch out you need to watch who you let pray for you you need to watch y'all ain't liking this you need to watch who you lay hands that you let lay hands on you try the spirit y'all somebody clap your hand and shout glory shout glory take your seat if you will <clears throat> but tell your neighbor tell your neighbor take your seat if you will I don't want to be long tell your neighbor say the next time you pray uh, say don't ask for a car don't ask for a house uh, say ask God to give you discernment uh, ask God to, to let me know the difference between good and evil ask God to show me the devils and show me the demons I'm talking about it show me where the witches are show me who don't belong in my life show me who got a foul spirit show me don't mean me no good huh? thank God I want to be saved tonight uh, and so here they are I'm getting ready to close here here they are uh, this 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 man messes Israel up and gets them into a dilemma this man who has a moral crisis moral crises at the highest level of leadership this man who throws the nation thank God real and out of order this man Thank God who intrudes in places he doesn't belong. This man, amen, who dares to practice the priesthood when God has not called him. Thank God to be a priest. This man is the one that causes Israel, amen, to be so frantic. And he is the reason, uh, amen, along with Israel and, and their carnal desires, uh, amen, that pushed them into this place. And, and so as I close, here they are. Saul gets rejected. I can't tell that story. Saul is rejected. Saul is rejected. Can I get a witness? Saul is rejected rejected to catch this a rejected while he's accepted rejected while he's celebrated rejected while he's still in place rejected while he's still in position rejected 
while he's still, thank God, on the throne and, and he's still king of Israel. But God has already, thank God, gone into the hill land and, and found a little shepherd boy. Amen. Ain't been doing nothing but, but tending to sheep. Can I get a witness? And, and he was getting trained while, while he didn't know he was being trained. I wish I had time because somebody needs to learn how to be faithful in the place that God got you in. Somebody got to learn. Can I talk tonight? Learn to learn how to be satisfied where you are. We got too many discontents and malcontents sitting up in the church. Y'all can get quiet. It's all right. Too many discontented folk and malcontented folk, dour folk. You ever notice that? I've never seen a day when there were so many unhappy folk in the church. And, and that's because that's because we've been overhyped with this notion of destiny. And everybody has been tricked and deceived with the spirit of elevation and self-emulation and everybody thinks that that I'm supposed to be the leader it don't even make sense all of us can't be the leader let me just help everybody can can I help somebody tonight preachers all of us cannot be Bishop T.D. Jakes all of all of us I, I wish I could talk if y'all if, if y'all would tell me to talk I talk for a minute you got to be tell your neighbor be satisfied with who you is be satisfied I know that's bad English, but it sound better. Tell them again, be satisfied with, with who you is. You, you'll live out your days in a horrific way. You'll die bitter. Preachers, you'll preach bitter. You'll teach bitter because you live jaundice, uh, trying to be somebody God ain't called you to be. You should celebrate what God has done for Bishop Smith, but, but don't try to make yourself Bishop Smith. If you, can't, if you can handle it, God will give it to you if it ain't for me amen i thank god for what i have i thank god i wish i i wish i was in the right place i wish i had about 10 people amen that thank god for where they are and i ain't jealous about where somebody else is i thank him i thank him i thank him you you can be seated tell your neighbor you may as well get happy tell your neighbor tell your neighbor take your seat if you will take your seat but tell your neighbor say you may as well go on and get happy tonight go on and get happy say say ain't no need in you being jealous go on and get happy amen because at the end of the day you know what all of us got more than what we deserve all of us that's why I can be happy all the time. That's why I can praise God all the time. Because I don't deserve anything. But I thank him for what I have. And if I would learn how to be grateful for what I have, he could bless me with more. Can I get a witness in here? I got to close. I'm closing. I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing here. Everything, everything is messed up. I'm sorry. Israel is, is twisted and contorted and, and they're all over the map and, and they got this leader that's all over. Help me close. All over the map. Everything is in disarray. Saul has them in disarray and malcontented people and, and hear what God does. He goes in the hinterlands. He's rejected the big shot and gone in the hinterland found him a little shepherd boy anoints him to be king thank God over all of Israel y'all y'all know that don't you he didn't look like a king he didn't act like a king amen but God was on the inside and, and God directed Samuel to his house and when 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 his father didn't even believe in him God had to tell his father man look up on the outside but God looketh at the heart all you need is a heart for God all you need I, I wish I was in here is there anybody here that loved my Jesus let me see your hand anybody who loved my Jesus tonight ask your neighbor do you love him do you love him do you can I hear you sad do you love him anybody here that loved my Jesus and then ask them say how much do you love him how much how much tell your neighbor I really can't explain it y'all got to help me preach say I can't explain it say but all I can tell you is as the heart panteth after the water brook my soul 
thirsteth uh, amen for the presence of God uh, and so my brothers and sisters here we are here we are thank God in this chapter David has been selected and and now the dynamics are set everything is disrupted a disrupted atmosphere and here we are now here we are amen the Philistines have, have come out the Philistines have come out to battle and they were always fighting Israel they were the sea people you didn't know where they came from they we don't hardly know their background they just come out to see just come out and attack you everybody know about a those philistine they they just pop up when you don't want them to pop up they attack when you don't want them to attack they they come against you when when you don't want them to come against you and and the philistines again were tormenting israel one of those enemies that they had failed to drive out and now here they were in this chapter here they were the bible tells us it talks about them tells us their location i'm closing right now say they gathered together their armies thank god to battle and were gathered together at Sakam, which belongeth to judah and pitcheth between shaka and azika in ephesodom in amen there they were the philistines uh, they were on a mountain thank god in Saka. and and the bible tells us that saul thank god in israel they were gathered together pitched by the valley of elah they were set thank god in battle array to go up against the philistines uh, and the valley thank god was in between them uh, look at where they were look at where they were look at where they were the philistines were were in the mountain in Saka. <laughs> amen which belongeth thank God to Judah and here here Israel was on the other side of the valley and you know what happened you know what happened they sent they sent they sent thank God that giant down giant by the name of Goliath and the Goliath came down and said give me a man that will come and fight with me I don't know if it's ever occurred to you how serious that circumstance was I don't know if it ever occurred to you how horrific that dilemma was it was a ridiculous place to be in they never should have been in that place uh, the giant never should have had to ask give me somebody to come and fight with me uh, but nobody would fight the giant uh, isn't it strange uh, that the king wouldn't fight him uh, it be strange uh, have you ever thought uh, Saul should have went down and stood up against the giant uh, but Saul had lost his anointing Saul had lost his favor brothers and sisters whatever you do you can't afford to lose your anointing uh, whatever you do uh, I got to close tonight uh, reach over and shake your neighbor's hand uh, and say hey neighbor uh, whatever you do don't lose your anointing uh, you didn't say it like you should have uh, would you say it one more time uh, amen open up your mouth and say hey neighbor uh, say whatever you do uh, don't lose your anointing uh, don't lose the favor of God uh, but somehow Saul had lost the favor uh, somehow Saul uh, thank God was in the mountain uh, thank God on the other side uh, somehow Saul uh, was standing there with Israel uh, when they came down and the giant said give me a man that'll come down and fight for me uh, can I get a witness in here uh, but I'm so glad uh, amen that God had anointed a little shepherd boy uh, can I get a witness in the house uh, and I heard the Bible say uh, that David uh, when he came down to the battle lines uh, and when he heard uh, what the giant was breathing out I heard David open up his mouth and say who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God he said if nobody else will fight he said I'll go down and fight somebody clap your hand and shout glory right now 
went down he had to go down thank God to the battle line and I heard the Bible say before he could go down and fight he had to get permission thank God from King Saul and he went and stood before the king and said I want to go down and fight this giant and I heard Saul look at him he said David you're not prepared for this fight he said you're still red behind the ears you haven't been trained in warfare but I heard David say you don't know my story can I get a witness in here let me see the hand of somebody that got a pass with God if you got a pass look at your neighbor and say hey neighbor y'all don't want to help me preach say hey neighbor say I don't know about you but I got a pass with God say I I don't know about you but I got a history with God can I get a witness in here I wish I had somebody that was a living testimony can I see your hand if God has been your keeper if you know he's been your keeper turn and tell your neighbor say hey neighbor say I'm a living testimony look where he brought me from look at what God brought me on I wish I was in the right church I wish I was talking to somebody that's been through toils and snares I wish I was talking to somebody that's been to hell and back I wish I was talking to somebody that had to fight in the backlands look and tell your neighbor say hey neighbor I don't look like what I've been through I wish I I wish I could preach tonight I wish I had somebody that would holler out and say hey neighbor I had to fight to get to the place I'm in I had to fight to get out to church tonight
when he got the victory they went on across the valley and took the other mountain I got the clothes but may I remind you the Philistines were in the mountain in soccer and soccer was in Judah and what that meant was the enemy had gone behind the line and took over Judah and Judah means praise and I came to tell somebody if you don't watch the devil he'll get into your praise if you don't watch the devil I wish I could preach he'll invade your prayer territory but I this road to tell somebody if I don't keep any position I'm gonna hold the place of my praise y'all ain't gonna help me preach when you help me preach when you look at your neighbor and say hey neighbor whatever you do don't let the devil get in your praise space don't let the devil invade your worship your worship territory I will y'all ain't gonna help me but can I preach anyhow look at somebody shake your head and say I don't know what you gonna do but I, I, I will I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You can take my money. You can take my car. You can have my house. But one thing you can't have, you can't have my praise. Help me, Holy Ghost, to keep on praising God. Lord, prepare me to be a living sanctuary pure and holy tried and true I just rose to tell somebody tonight after all I've been through still got joy still got a shout still got a dance still got a praise when you have me preach shake your neighbor and say wake up and praise God wake up and thank God wake up and give God glory you are it you are it you are it Everybody standing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to my seat. I hope the goulash made sense. There's a place in you that you must reserve for God. The Philistines had no business with control of anything that's in Judah. Anything that can stop you from praising God, got too much control. 
anything that can stop you from saying thank you Jesus got too much control there's a place there's a line you need to draw and tell the enemy you can't come here matter of fact the more you do to me the more I'm going to fight for my place the holler, the louder I'm going to holler. The higher I'm going to jump. Let's join hands. Without the music. Because sometimes music props up our praise. It has its place. I appreciate good, good musicians. But sometimes, sometimes God wants a naked praise. Mm. We're getting ready to pray, but ask, ask your neighbor, say, say, do you know what a naked praise is? Now, they're going to act like they don't know. Tell them it's the kind your mama used to have. Before we had a praise team. Before we had an orchestra. Amen. You, you know, your mama used to make a, a joyful noise. I wish I could talk. I, we got to go. I'm going to pray. But how many remember your grandmama and your mama, they walked around the house praising God all day. Walk up the stairs, glory, every step. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Y'all remember what I'm talking Sometimes God wants a naked praise without frills. Sometimes he wants an ugly praise. Some demons we can't shake until we get ugly. You're too sophisticated with some demons. Some demons you got to roll up your sleeves and say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And while I'm binding you, I'm going to give God to glory. Hallelujah. And so I just want you to do two things for you. I want you to pray for one another right now. Me, my, 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 take 45 seconds and I want you to pray that Jesus builds a fence around that worship space in all whose hands you hold come on pray right now just pray let your neighbor hear you pray open your mouth bind demons bind devils Somebody needs that prayer tonight. Speak it. Somebody needs victory before they go home. Somebody needs deliverance before they go home. They came to the mission conference. But God has a mission to do in their life. And if you pray right now. Come on, just a few more moments. Now squeeze those hands and start binding demons and devils. Pray like your mother taught you to pray. Say to the Lord God rebuke you. Take your ugly hands off of God's property. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, cover them, cover them, cover them, cover them with your prayer, cover their sanity, cover their strength, cover their mind, cover their nerves, cover their home, cover their fa cover them, and above all, cover their joy. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I want you to give God the most ridiculous praise with your mouth and with your hands hey hey open your mouth and praise him open your mouth ah glory 
Open your mouth.